my God, Jesus. Most precious and eternal Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I stand to give you glory, honor, and praise. I lift and exalt and magnify your name. Mm. Be thou great in our midst today. God, we invite your Holy Spirit. We invoke your presence on today. Father, we stand in the need of thee. God, you said whatever we ask in your name, it shall be granted unto us. God, as we stand in this holy and consecrated place, send out anointing, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Lord God, in the name of God, let the wind of God breathe in this house. Jesus. Let your anointing, my God, flow from the ceiling to the door, from the windows to the door, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power that's invested in me, through my the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
singing as the song went on. God, we want to be free.
every temperament, every attitude. Mm. Father, in God, place your nail scar to hang in the seat of every emotion. In the name of the Lord, God, and bring forth healing in Jesus' name. Thank you for the healing, not only of our physical body, but the healing of our spiritual souls. We bless and magnify your name today. You are good and a great and an awesome God. Magnificent and holy is your name. And God, I praise you in this house. I magnify and give you the glory in the name of Jesus the Christ. I bless you right now in Jesus' name. Have thine own way, God. Have a way, Lord Jesus. Have it behind the cross of Calvary. Oh, God, speak of the oracles of God. In the name of the Lord, I surrender. I surrender unto thee, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Mm. And God, I bless you for the same. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. My soul mm. says amen. Amen. Mm. amen. Yes, Lord. As I was um, mm. contemplating the word of the Lord and the scripture that was given, amen, for the theme for today, as I was saying earlier, it had me going in so many different directions for this reason, a Pastor Dredden, uh, for this reason, amen, as I began to think about the scripture that was given, amen, I thought about preparation, and then I thought also not only about preparation, but I thought about the dwelling place. And when I begin to think about the dwelling place, amen, <coughs> I begin to consider the word of the Lord and how it all began, how it all started. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And as I was considering the Lord, God put a thought down in my spirit. And I thought about it. I said, Lord, it's not by coincidence nor happenstance that Today is Pentecost Sunday. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, what more befitting day than Pentecost Sunday for you to move and to have your way in the lives of your people? Amen. When I begin to consider the word of the Lord, amen, and I went into the book of Acts, amen, and just begin to revive, uh, amen, that scripture there in my spirit, amen, praise the name of the Lord. Then the Lord took me back, amen, in the book of Luke, amen, then he took me a little further back, Amen. Praise the name of the Lord in Psalms. Amen. That he took a little further back. Oh I said, Lord, Jesus. Jesus, what are you doing here? And I said, Lord, hey. help me with the spirit of the Lord that is in me. Amen. To be able to monitor and be able to do what I desire to do as unto you and present to you something, Lord God, that will be a sweet smelling savor mm. in, your, in your nostrils. You know, when you're a preacher, amen, and you've taken time to study the word of the Lord, amen. You have the word of God in you, so sometimes you can bring what's in you out of you. Amen. But I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what would you have me to say in the house on today? Amen. And the Lord began to deal with structure. Mm. He began to deal with structure in the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And then I want to just go back, if I can, amen, to this thought. Amen. And the 
tree. Right. The word of God says, as Jesus was coming along, he looked up in the tree. Mm -hmm. And he says, Zacchaeus, he said, make haste, first of all, be quick about it. Mm -hmm. Make haste and come down. Mm -hmm. He said, for this day, I must dwell in thine house. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about mm -hmm. a dwelling place. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a place of habitation. He said, come down, Zacchaeus. And the Bible says, Zacchaeus made haste. Mm -hmm. And he came down. And he said, and he received the Lord joyfully. Mm -hmm. All right? He took me from Luke 19. Then he took me up to John. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as I was reading there, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, did you get that scripture, sweetie? You got that? She's writing. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord said to me, preparation. Preparation. We want the Lord to be a habitation for us, but it calls for preparation. Preparation. All right? First of all, we found out manifestation came into the world. He was born. He came into the world. Did not he? Then there came anticipation because of the manifestation that came into the world. Now before I go with you into John the 20th chapter, let us flip back if we can to Luke 24 right about the 49th verse there. And Jesus begins to say to his disciples, he says, behold, he says to them, I'm going to give unto you the gift of God, mm -hmm. the thing that you've been waiting for. <clears throat> he said, you want to receive that. He said, but I want you to tarry in the city of Jerusalem. That you may be endowed with power. Mm -hmm. Did did not he mm -hmm. say that? Mm -hmm. did, did he say that? The anticipation, the manifestation. Now he said, I want you to be in a particular place at a particular time that you might receive. That which you've been waiting for. All right. So after he said that to them, then if you'll go up into St. John, after Jesus Christ was crucified, I'm going to get to my text, but if I can just lay some foundation here. After Jesus Christ was crucified, the Bible says, and on the first day of the week, in the 20th chapter there, on the first day of the week, it says, Mary Magdalene and the others, they went to the sepulcher to see Jesus. Right? Yeah. And when she got there, he was not there. So she ran back and told the disciples, listen, I've been to the sepulcher to see Jesus, and he's not there. I don't know where he's gone. So the Bible says, Peter and that other disciple, and we know when it says that other <laughs> disciples talk about John. Right. They ran to the sepulcher along with Mary Magdalene. Well, when they didn't find him there, the Bible says they went back. But Mary Magdalene hung around. Come on. She stayed right there. Come on. And the Bible says as she gazed in, as she looked into the sepulchre, she saw two angels. And I was coming in the door this morning as my sister was up in the pulpit. And she was saying, and I said, you better leave me alone. <laughs> That's what I say when folk is all up in my business. And she was all up in the business. And I said, she better leave me alone. And I took a seat back there. But the Bible says that she looked in and she didn't see him. So she said to herself, who is my Lord? And she begins to weep. And the angel said, woman, why weepest thou? She said, I've come to see my Lord and I don't know where he is. Then Jesus himself said, woman, why weepest thou? But then he went on a little further. He said, whom seeketh you? 
Who you seeking after? And when he said Mary, yeah. mm -hmm. she recognized the voice of her Lord. She recognized him. And the Bible says they went from that place on and Jesus came into their place, their dwelling place. They were behind closed doors because of fear of the Jews. And the Bible says Jesus began to show his scars to them. But there needed to be preparation. He gave them, amen, the gift of anticipation was, I'm going to tell you how you're going to receive it. Being in the right place at the right time. I want you to receive the gift of God, but you've got to go Jeru to Jerusalem to get it. But now there comes a time for preparation. I can't go to Jerusalem and receive if I'm not prepared for the thing I'm anticipating of receiving. Yeah. Mm. So the Bible says Jesus, after he began to disclose unto them all that he had to suffer and the word of the Lord that had come to pass, then he breathed on them yeah. and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Then, in Acts, the first chapter, the second verse, second chapter, Acts, the second chapter, the first verse, it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it says they were all gathered. On one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it said that it filled the house where they were seated. And they saw clothes and tongues of fire that lit upon them. And the Bible said, and they all began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. We're talking about making a habitation, being a habitation for the Spirit of God. Isn't yeah. that what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Lord began to deal with me in that measure and took me in the scripture to the 132nd Psalm. And we're going to start that text there. Okay. Women becoming a habitation mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. Now, Webster's Dictionary defined habitation as a dwelling place, mm -hmm. a place of residence. A dwelling place, a place of residence. Mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. Everybody have Psalms 132? Amen. Amen. If you just grab hold of not only Psalms 132, praise the name of the Lord, but then I also want you to um, get 1 Chronicles 28 and 4. 1 Chronicles 28 and 4. <coughs> Have you ever wondered why God called David a man after his own heart? What was David's secret? What was it about David that God would bless him with so much causing him to be king over all of Israel? We've heard people say that it was because that David had a quick turnaround when it came to repentance. But if we search the word of the Lord, we'll find out there were other people in the Bible as well that repented quickly. So that is not the reason why God said that David was a man after his own heart. There's something unique about David which calls him to stand out. Psalms 132, where we find David, a man's secret. David wrote the psalm, amen, when he was fleeing from the presence of Saul. The Bible lets us know that Saul was very jealous of David because he was afraid that David would become king over him. And so because of his fear, amen, Saul sought 
the life of David. So David fleed from the presence of Saul, and this particular scripture, 132 Psalm, was written in the backdrop of the wilderness. The word of God says there, Lord, remember David and all of his afflictions. How he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, surely I will not go into the chamber of my house, nor go up to the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I. Stop right there. Until I. David was making a vow to God in the wilderness that he would neither sleep nor rest until he did something. Mm -hmm. But before we complete the statement of his vow, let's turn to 1 Chronicles 28 and 4. Mm -hmm. Where David testifies of how God saw him. 28 and 4. The word of the Lord reads, How be it the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. Mm. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father he liked me to make me king over all Israel. Mm -hmm. David said God liked him. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's nice to be liked by God. Yeah. <laughs> he said, he liked me. What made David a man after God's heart? I believe that God liked David because he got a hold of something that was of a great importance to God's heart. Mm. This was revealed in the vow that he made in the wilderness. He says, I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord. A dry place, mm. a habitation oh, for the mighty one of Jacob. Yes, Lord. And he continues down on the 8th verse, and he says, Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, mm -hmm. you and the ark of your strength. David was talking about bringing the ark of the covenant mm -hmm. back to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. This is what David was after. And because he placed such importance on bringing back the ark, God considered him a man after mm -hmm. his heart. All right. Now, what's so significant about the Ark of the Covenant? Amen. What's so significant? A lot of times, amen, we don't understand the realities of the word of the Lord and how significant things are. Sometimes we gloss over things. Mm -hmm. And we don't take the time to really dig in deep. Amen. To understand the heart of God. Amen. Everything that's written in the word of God is written for a reason. Amen. It's not just there. It's written for a reason. Amen. Now the word of the Lord says, in the days of the old covenant, God dwelt between the two cherubim, which were on the ark of the covenant. Amen. This was the throne of God. Whenever the children of Israel brought the ark to battle, and Israel was in alignment with God, the word of God lets us know that God will give them victory over their enemies. Mm. And I specifically said in alignment with God. Mm. You know the 133rd Psalm says how good and how pleasant it is yeah. that yeah. brethren yeah. should dwell yeah. together yeah. in yeah. unity. Yeah. Yeah. Then it goes on to say how, amen, that togetherness, that spirit of unity, it's like the oil that was poured on Aaron's head. Yeah. Not only poured on his head, but <laughs> to flow down to his beard yeah. and yeah. into the skirt, the garment,
It's all right. Let me tell you something about me, precious ones. I said, I am on a mandate by God. I am a preacher of holiness and righteousness. Come on. That's my job. God's my boss. Yes. And that's what I'll do on Friday if he spared my life and said the same. Amen. <laughs> when I got there, I preached the word. Amen. All right. So many of them stood up in the back, clapping their hands and crying. Mm. And many came around inside the casket and wanted to talk. I said, I can't talk to you here, Shubas. I'll talk to you outside. It wasn't a proper place. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to you outside. Mm -hmm. This is God's precious word that he's given to his so great a people. Isn't that right? So how was set up? God would speak to the priest between the two cherubims on the Ark of the Covenant. This was the throne of God. Whenever the children of God of Israel brought the Ark with them when they were in battle, and they were aligned with God, the Bible lets us know they always came out victorious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They always came out victorious. Saints of God, get in alignment. Hallelujah. Get in alignment. Hallelujah. Get, get, get in alignment. Hallelujah. Line up. Yeah. God will defeat your enemies. Line up. God will tear down every stronghold. Line up. Line up. God's anointing will destroy the yokes of bondage. Line up. Line up. Line up. Line up. Line up. Yes, sir. A habitation of God. I prepared myself a habitation for God. During the Old Testament days, Israel was considered the holiest country. Jerusalem, the holiest city. And the temple of the temple mount, the holiest mount and city within. But the holiest place in the temple was the Holy of Holies. In the temple we find the furniture, such as the menorah, yeah, the yeah, altar yeah. of incense, yeah, yeah, yeah. the table of shoe bread, yeah. in the holy place. Yeah. But behind the veil was the holy of holies. Yeah. And only one piece of furniture was found there. <laughs> and it was the, the ark of the covenant. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was the holiest object on earth at that point in time. Mm -hmm. It was the centerpiece of God at the center of the universe <laughs> and in the center of God's heart. Mm -hmm. God would speak to the high priest from between the two cherubims. This place was actually the mercy seat. The ark was so important to God that he gave the Israelite instruction exactly how it was to be constructed. Yeah, yeah. Every detail of the ark gives us a clearer picture of Jesus. The ark of the covenant points to the person and work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Stay with me. He is the centerpiece of God's heart. The box portion of the ark was made of acacia wood and overlaid with gold. Mercy. And the acacia wood is known in Israel today as incorruptible wood. <laughs> so this speaks of Jesus' incorruptible humanity. Because wood represents humanity. And the acacia wood represents incorruptible humanity. So Jesus Christ, amen, was incorruptible. Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh as you and me. But there was no sin in him. Gold in the Bible speaks of divinity and deity. So the one overlaid with the gold. 
trying to be deep, mm-hmm. but they call it that. How he can be 100% mm-hmm. human and at the same time 100% God. Yeah, well, now listen, the lead was made of a solid slab of gold. And when we study that, we find out they had to beat that gold. They beat that gold. They beat that gold <laughs> into formation. They beat that gold. Representing the Lord Jesus Christ when he had been, when he was spent and scourged. And the word of God said, by his stripes, yeah. by his stripes, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're healed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Hebrew, the lid is called the Zipporus, which means the mercy seat. Now, three things were contained in the Ark of the Covenant. The first was the stone tablets on which God wrote the Ten Commandments. 